This is another proof from chapter four. You can see in this example I have a circle. I'm given the center of the circle. Uh, I'm given some lines that look like they might be perpendicular. I'm told that that point is a midpoint, and I want to prove that the lines are perpendicular. Um, this is a proof that could be done in one of two ways. Could be done using congruent triangles and basically using a detour proof. Uh, I could prove the two triangles here congruent by side, side, side using uh, two congruent radii. Uh, once I prove the two triangles congruent, I could show that these two angles were supplementary because they form a straight angle, angle A and B, and that they're also congruent, which makes them right angles, allowing me to show that the lines are perpendicular. Okay, completely nothing wrong with doing that. However, the equidistance theorems often are a little bit faster, and that's something you're going to see in this case. Uh, the key is very simple. Anytime you're going to use an equidistance theorem, you need to look for a segment that appears to have another segment that is bisecting it and perpendicular to it. And you can see in my diagram here, segment AB is that segment. I need to find two points that are equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. So just in general, if I have a segment and I know that one point is equidistant from the endpoints of, of that segment, there are lots of different lines that can pass through that segment that are not necessarily perpendicular to that segment. However, if I pick a second point, then when you draw the line through those two points, you're always going to be guaranteed that that line has to be the perpendicular bisector. So, I'm always looking for two points equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Usually, if you go look along the line, it looks like it's the perpendicular bisector. You can find points that appear to be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Okay? In this case, M appears to be equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB. O appears to be equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB. If I can show that, then I can use one of the equidistance theorems. So, my goal here is to show that AM is congruent to MB. Well, I know that because it's a midpoint. Uh, M is a midpoint. So, I do know that AM is congruent to MB. I can go ahead and mark that in my diagram. Uh, if a segment has a midpoint, then it is divided into congruent segments. Okay? That's my first point. And in fact, I'll often put a little dot next to that statement to show that I have my first of two points required to use the equidistance theorem. Okay, uh, the second thing, I can draw OA and OB, and that's because two points determine a segment. Uh, once I do that, I know that those two segments are congruent to each other. Uh, so I'm allowed to draw in those two segments there. I know that AO is congruent to OB, uh, and of course the reason is all radii of the circle are congruent. Um, that is a second point that's equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB. And what that means then is that the line containing those two points is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. And so at that point, I can go ahead and say, I can actually say that OM is the perpendicular bisector of AB. I'm only asked to show that it's perpendicular, so that's all I'm going to list. But I'm going to conclude that OM is perpendicular to AB. And that is, and again, you might need to do some practice, if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So again, anytime you're trying to show a perpendicular bisector, find two points, in this case that one and that one, that are equidistant from the endpoints of your segment, and if you can do that, you can use this theorem right here. Takes a little memorizing, but it saves you a lot of steps over having to do a detour proof.